For the last step, we just need to confirm the inputs of everything that we've provided so far. You can see that we have a quick check of some of the common problems that might happen with your inputs. And the tool does a little bit of logic to look out for these and alert you of them. First off, the rogue configuration is the same between baseline and upgrade. That's what we wanted. But it doesn't have to be. In most cases, though, if you have a difference, you'll want to make sure that that's actually what you intended. Next, we're using the IES calculation method. That's also as we expect. And we've entered lighting targets for that method. We haven't entered any values for the CIE method, but that's all right because we've chosen, chosen the IES method and so we don't need to provide those inputs. We've chosen a baseline fixture and we have four upgrade fixtures and that's also as we expect. If we go look down below, we can also review the full set of inputs. We have the baseline and upgrade in the columns C and D. And you can see that we have the row geometry section, number of lanes, lane width, etc. We have the calculation methods and the targets that we've set for each of those. We have our general costs, which are used across the board for all calculation assumptions. And then lastly, we have the currently selected fixtures, the first one being the baseline fixture, fixture E, and all of its associated assumptions, and then each of the four remaining fixtures. These all look good, so let's go ahead and start calculating the results. The tool takes some time to perform the calculations because it's accounting for the contributions of lots of fixtures that are surrounding the measurement grid at each of the grid points and then does summary analysis on each of those. And Excel has some limitations on how quickly those can be performed. When it creates the output file, by default it saves it into the same folder that the tool itself is stored and names it using a date stamp of when the file was saved and created and whether it was the CIE or IES calculation method. If you had selected both methods, there would be two output files. And it's done. The tool returns us to the confirmation step, but the results file is actually open at the same time. So let's take a look at that file. First off, we have our dashboard, which has various graphs indicating what the results were for this analysis. Here we can see that we have the first graph of illuminance versus wattage. We have three, or two rather, two fixtures that have failed the criteria, two fixtures that have passed, and then our baseline fixture here indicated in red. You can see that here we're comparing how much light we got to how much the wattage was. We have a similar graph below for luminance, which is obviously different levels, but uh, similar presentation. Next up, let's look at our actual versus target illuminance and luminance. In these cases, we have the blue indicating the target levels and the yellow indicating the actual results for each of the individual fixtures. Unlike the previous step, this allows us to see how far away from the target we were for each one of these. And again, we have the same graph below for luminance. Last, we have our uniformity, which is the ratio of the average to the minimum light level in that road section. We have our five fixtures, the baseline and the four results, and we can see how those compare. Down below for luminance, we actually have two different types of uniformity, the ratio of average to minimum and the ratio of maximum to minimum. And in this case, we can see the differences among each of those. As we scroll down, we can also see that there are two graphs indicating the costs. Again, the red corresponds to the baseline. And in this case, we can see that with the assumptions that we used here, it'll take about nine years before we're able to recover the cost of an additional installation of a more efficient fixture. That won't always be the case. It depends highly on the input assumptions you use. 
another way of looking at this is also with the return on investment. And here we can see that up until about year eight or nine, we have a negative return on investment, meaning the upgrade won't pay for itself. But then after that, we can see the percentage value of that annual return on investment based on the assumption we provided for discount rates and inflation rates of things like maintenance cost and energy usage. Along the bottom of the screen, you can see that we have several tabs. Each one of these has tables of some of these results categorized as appropriate. So we have a table summarizing our inputs. We have a table indicating just the annual energy use in kilowatt hours per fixture as well as per kilometer uh, based on the pole spacing. We have a tab for illuminance indicating both our levels and our target levels and whether it meets this criteria. The same thing for luminance. We have a table of simple payback which doesn't include any of the inflation rates or discount rate. And you can see what some of these results are on a per year basis. And lastly, we have our net present value, which does include the calculations of the discount rates and inflation rates. And these, of course, all correspond to the same graphs that we saw on the dashboard. That's all there is for now. If you have any questions, you can look at the reference manual that we have posted on the SEED website, supererefficient.org. And you can also download the tool there and try it out for yourself. Thanks so much.